everybody. Welcome to ZOMG, our video game trailer reaction show. I am joined by co-hosts. If you waddy way. And Malika Lim. And I'm Zach Eubank. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Pamela's not able to join us for these and a couple others, but she will be back soon, so keep an eye out. But we're going to be watching right now Lawbreakers, the official cinematic trailer. Now, I know a lot of people have been playing this in beta for a while. You, you've you played it, right? No, I got in the beta, didn't play it, but I played it at E3. Oh, so, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. I tried getting in the beta. I got in. And then it was like a weekend where we had some big event and yeah. I couldn't do it or anything like that. I think that. that was the same weekend I got it. Yeah, <laughs> we I was like, oh, we can't do it. We, uh, got too yeah. many things to do. But I'm really excited for it. Uh, I think we should just watch the trailer and then we'll talk about yeah. it. Sure. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, dick move. Also dick move. Gravity so, defying combat. Yeah, yeah. It looks like what you were just talking about. Yeah, it's a lot of. It's very aerial, very fast paced, zero G type of combat. So, how, I mean, this is a like cinematic trailer. How yeah. accurate does it represent the feeling of playing the game? I'd say the feeling <laughs> of playing is a lot faster. <laughs> like, a lot like, faster. Really? A lot faster. You're, you're just constantly moving. The game mode I played was called Blitz Ball, where they, a ball would spawn at the middle of the map and you have to take it to the enemy's Wait, 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 wait. Blitz Ball, like in Final Fantasy X Yeah, like Blitz in Ball? Final Fantasy X Blitz Ball. Okay. Um, but that might not be the name. I might be flubbing it up, but just know there's a ball and there's zero G. And so each of the uh, characters, I only played one, but every character has a different way of movement. Some have just pats like you've seen in that trailer. There's the one lady and she has the whip that can get her better. And the whip reminds me a lot of um, Bullet Storm. Okay. Where you're just dragging people to you and getting around and they're sliding and dashing. And it's just like your typical comp for games like this where like you're faster, people are going to be squishy, and you're more tanky heroes are going to be slower and like not so it's kind of like they're mixing the class systems of overwatch with your more twitchy gameplay yes. of unreal tournament and i stuff think like that's that. i think that's one of the better ways to describe it. so i mean it's it's coming out this is like the first project from cliffy b since gears three uh I think so. I think it's so. Been, I think it's Gears of War well, three was like, he kind of soft retired. Bullet Storm. Bullet Storm. Remember. But that was that was before Gears of War three. He didn't work was on the remaster, did he? Bullet Storm came um, after. I don't think so. I th I feel like he took a little bit of retirement, and yeah. this is Cliffy B's big return. Uh, and he, you know, this is the guy that brought us Unreal Tournament. So yeah. this kind of looks like a return to form in that kind of twitchy gameplay. At least some of the gameplay clips that I've seen, like really fast paced. Oh yeah. Move, How do you move, feel move. about the so, game? Yeah, uh, actually. He, well, 
okay, Gears, you're right. The only time after Gears 3, wow, you're very on point. Gears 3 was the last thing he did between, uh, the only thing between this was super hot. But it Where he co designed in a uh, just a stage. level. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, what do you guys think of the game becoming. Uh, pay to play versus it's n- free to play well uh i feel like originally this was announced to be a free to play mm-hmm. game but then it looks like something that would be a free to play any kind of heroes kind yeah. of game i'm yeah. like okay but it was uh, cliffy b came out i might have even been as long as a year ago and just like no no longer are we gonna be free to play it's gonna be 29.99 and when I first heard it was going to be twenty nine ninety nine, I thought that meant it was going to be you pay to play it, but then if you want to do right. DLC and stuff yeah. like that. But apparently, mm-hmm. you said at the PC gaming, yeah, uh, it's, it's, expo- it's twenty nine ninety nine on Steam. That's what you're buying it for. And I think it's it's I think it's a smart strategic move because I feel like when you go free to play, there's this. Uh, there's just this idea of the game before it comes out. There's tons of great games that I think are out that aren't looked at because they're free to play. I'm talking Warframe. I'm talking Paragon. I'm talking, you know, like when, when people know it's free to play, there's not a urgency to check it out because it's one of some of those are also in early access and beta for a very long time. And so, so it just, but when you, at a price point, then people are like, oh, this is the new hotness. I need to get it. And I think the smart thing was making it 30 instead of 60. Because well, he was pretty, the, you said he was pretty, he had some color commentary. Oh, yeah. That. He said, he said, none of, he said it's going to be $29.99. None of that $60 bullshit. A direct quote from the PC gaming show uh, that happened at the Ace Hotel where I was sitting all the way in the back because I spent too much time getting snacks. I, was, <laughs> I snacked it up. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I think it's a smart play because one of the biggest criticisms I think Overwatch has gotten was being $60. Yeah. Even though I think it's well worth... Every, Especially with all the updates they've yeah, put out. I think it's free. well worth $60. Yeah. I feel like PC gamers though, we... We're we're spoiled, and I don't, and I don't mean that in a negative connotation. I mean we're spoiled in the sense that we can get games at a good price. We, yeah. it, and and so when you try and use the same model that you use for console on PC players, you're not gonna get us excited <laughs> because we'll, we're like there's someone's creating a game or modding a game at a cheaper price than right. that. So 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 this should be interesting. I think it's gonna be pretty. I think we're going to have a good release. I feel like when the beta was around, it blew up on Twitch a little bit. And we've seen the power of Twitch thanks to games like PUBG. Um, So, and once again, I think PUBG also $30. I thought another thing they did that was pretty interesting was when they were doing those uh, very early betas of the game, there was no NDA on the footage. They were encouraging people like, we're confident. We think it's a great game. Share it. Oh, yeah. Which to me always makes me feel better about a a game that's doing betas early because... I, that, that, having that level of confidence and still knowing that you're going to make changes to make it better, like I, I think that says a lot about the quality of the game you know you're putting out. Well, what's oh, yeah. interesting is game development is an iterative process, and a lot of people actually, even just hardcore gamers, they don't understand how many times a game goes through changes. And right now, the big thing in games is we don't want to let people down. Right? Oh, yeah. Games are overhyped, overmarketed, and so I understand the nervousness. But I, I agree with you. I think that is the right strategy to go. Don't like hide things. Don't make it secret. Don't put these NDAs for uh, streamers to sign embargoes. I think that's a very smart strategy. And I think yeah. in the future, more games are going to be moving in that direction. Well, let's talk this. This is a question I asked on my uh, Twitter. I had a poll for it, and it was a <laughs> landslide of yes. But I think it's interesting to have this discussion since you are a game dev. Malika, I feel like the consumer uh, <laughs> uh, is what really tied it the vote on this. But as we, it seems like more and more we're moving into betas. We're, we're moving like lots of beta, lots of alpha, lots of consumer participation in this process, which would normally be paid uh, game testers are now being just done for free by people who are excited to play the game. So with that being said, do you think as we move more and more into alpha community, alpha and beta testing, should there be a higher incentive for people who participate in the beta process? Absolutely. There's a movement in game design right now. It's been around for a few years called player centric 
design. So yeah. this is, um, you know, we hear about all these analytics at like big companies at Blizzard and EA. So this is a way to collect lots and lots of data so that we don't launch an unbalanced game. Yeah. So I think it's a fantastic movement. It really puts the plow the power to the players. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, because I you saying that, like what I think is really interesting, a lot of these games that are going early access are charging you yep. even though they're going to be free to play when they come yep. out whereas it feels like they should be reward now they do usually reward you with like skins that no one else has access to in game gold higher xp stuff like that uh most of them yeah do give you that but it almost feels like by you're paying a lot to be a part of something that is doing the game testing for them yeah and i've seen some do something i like where it's cheaper when you buy into early access and then yeah. as it get closer to the release the price raises i think that is probably agree with that one of the best incentives where it's like you can buy this game for cheaper but you're gonna help us make it better because let's not let's not get ourselves you're doing game testing yeah Absolutely. they're collecting your data and they're building the game around that data. yeah that's that's what was interesting because malika kind of uh um put me up on game on this because i was saying well i guess not every player is uh is filling filling out those you know surveys but malika's like we they don't really need the yeah, surveys you right. can get all and and it's just as simple as like how many people are dying to this character how easy are people how long yeah, people all that data is collected yeah. if it's a good company yeah that knows in the, like in a modern kind of sense what they should be doing they're collecting all that data but yeah. even everything uh indie single a double a companies are doing this i mean this is the future of gaming but you're you're saying right uh with game testing i know in the past game companies will post on craigslist twenty dollars fifty dollars a hundred dollars two hundred dollars yeah. a day for you to test their game and it can be really boring though yeah really boring like <laughs> just running around the same broken level with the same frustrating frustratingly broken weapon over and over and over again yep uh well uh you played it you enjoyed it oh i loved it yeah. it comes out on august 8th very soon uh i've seen gameplay i thought the cinematic trailer was really fucking cool and that we should watch it it's a really neat trailer they put some time and effort into that uh i think it's it, it gets me hyped for the game I, is, I don't i know this isn't really your type of game what do you i mean you know of cliffy b though well one thing that i took away that was kind of exciting is i usually don't see this level of kind of light-hearted fun loving comedicness with that level of violence you gotcha. know it's usually, gotcha. usually like, it's more cartoonish right? like overwatch and it, and it has a history of a you know maybe a free-to-play game originally so it you know those games have this like mainstream look and it is fun-hearted light-hearted that kind of thing but it, he just shot off somebody's hand that yeah. was like the first thing that happens in the trailer right well he was shooting the gun away from the well. hand it looked like <laughs> you said it was a dick move. Well, yeah, because so, it was a dick. He just shot I the mean, gun away instead of shooting the guy. I was like, I thought it would have been nice. you just shoot the guy, but instead it was like he was toying with him. So tone wise, I'm kind of uh, interested <clears throat> to see what audience this will attract. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, yeah, I think it'll definitely be hardcore gamer audience. We'll see how it, it fares in the competitive scene. Well, that's well, this is one of my favorite things. This is probably my best uh, E3 in terms of like uh, being productive. Like usually my E3 is just playing games and trying to get into parties, but I've talked to a lot of cool people and, and you know, it is interesting to see the things that, uh, you know, I got to talk to someone at ESL and uh, we were just talking about games breaking into esports. What, what, what makes it stick? What doesn't make it stick? And I also had someone who, uh, is it was like a representative of like uh southeast uh, not southeast uh, but just asia twitch and their kind of takes in like what what makes games popular in asia and what and it was a very good conversation because i feel like lawbreakers is already trying to break into that esports range i mean the stage their booth at e3 had like random shout casting which was which if you if you come right after that like i did it makes your experience feel so shitty compared to like the people who had their game casted yeah. by these two like casters and like calling out dope plays but like you could tell they're kind of building up they want this to be an esports game and who doesn't there's so much money that that longevity too. yeah longevity you, everybody wants it because it keeps it keeps your game yeah. alive uh look at counter-strike global offensive that's been going for years yeah. and and you know and like i'm telling you like so many 
games outclass Glo- CSGO in, in graphics, but like it just has the staying power because it's so powerful and it's a mainstay in every cyber cafe. But anyway, back to, uh, let me wrap this up since we're getting <laughs> towards the end. But, but basically, it's, it's showing a lot of, it, everything I've seen so far shows that they want to break into esports, but really this, this next beta and kind of the response that people have to it is really going to uh, decide whether or not, because Quake made a big showing for esports at E3. Since we're not going to talk about Quake, I'm going to fit in some Quake talk here, but um, they pretty much made sure there was a Quake tournament oh, going yeah. on every, every day. day. And and it is interesting because Quake they brought used out to old be, pros yeah, too. brought out the old pros because Quake used to be like before esports was esports. There, Quake was there. No joke. I met some guys over the week uh, at the uh, the Twitch party who uh, they were old Quake pros from over ten years ago. Yeah, and they were just sharing stories with each other about these tournaments they used to go to and how it all used to go down. And I was like, wow, this is a world I didn't know. I yeah. mean, I knew it existed, but not to that extent. Yeah, like it was a whole other world before Twitch existed. Before they had eyes on this stuff, there was still this hugely competitive world. Oh yeah. So we'll see. I think Lawbreakers would be, uh, I think it'd be a fun one to play. Nah, maybe it's a little, I think it might be just a little too fast to watch, but I've been proven wrong before. All right. Well, guys, let us know if you're excited for the game in the comments below. And if you think this has a chance in staying in the esports realm and making it, you know, making a stand there and actually coming out in the next year. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back for more uh, ZOMG gameplay trailer reactions. Check them out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that wonderful stuff. Bye. See you later. Alligator.